All right. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, tonight is uh, church Bible study. Sorry. Uh, so if you are just waiting for everybody to come online. Okay, good. All right. Good evening, Tia. Good evening, Kayla. All right. We we'll just keep waiting. Okay. Jen, Yan. All right. Good evening. Okay. Awesome. We'll just wait for a few more people to join us. Uh, and uh, sorry, I was trying to maybe by next week I'll be able to. Know know how to get the uh, second camera going so that you can uh, you can be able to make your comment and still be live and everybody else can watch us okay good evening racine i can see you you've come online also awesome okay good evening diana okay awesome so we we'll just keep waiting maybe a few more minutes and I know maybe about three or four more of us are supposed to be joining in, and then we can start uh, the Bible study. All right, yeah, okay, ready, okay, awesome. <clears throat> okay, I think we will uh, we will start, and then whoever comes can join us, and uh, from where we, awesome, oh beautiful. Let's pray. Uh, precious Holy Spirit, we just want to thank you for tonight. We thank you for the grace that you've given us. We thank you for the gift of technology that can be used uh, to communicate with each other, uh, that we'll be able to learn your word in this manner. We just ask, Lord, Holy Spirit, that you will just come and minister to every one of us. We pray, Lord, that you will lead us into your truth today. We just uh, surrender to your leading, and we ask, Lord, that you have your way this evening again. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Uh, tonight, uh, in the next uh, couple of uh, weeks, if the Lord uh, permits and the Lord tarries, we are going to be looking at uh, the mind of Christ. And if you already got the note, uh, the handout. We are going to do the introduction today. What I want to do is that we're just going to be, we're going to try to stick to 35, 45 minutes to one hour. If you have your question, you can type it in the comment section and I'll be able to see it and we can respond to it. Unfortunately, like I said at the beginning, we are not able to, I don't know how to get the other, uh, get people involved so that uh, you can, when you're making your comment or contribution, that the other people can see you. I don't know how to do that yet, but I think I will try to find out how to do that so that next Wednesday we can, it will be more interactive by the grace of God. All right. And so tonight, uh, like I said, this uh, Bible study is going to be on the mind of Christ. And the reason why I just felt led to do a Bible study and do a series on the mind of Christ for all of us is this. Uh, with what has been happening in the last couple of months with this uh, coronavirus and the depth and the level of fear in many people's heart. Uh, people are so full of fear because of the information that uh, we keep receiving from the media, uh, social media, on TV and everywhere. We are being bombarded by different kinds of news and most of them are not very encouraging. And so our minds are filled up with so many negativity and so there's so much anxiety, um, panic, tension going on in the lives of many, uh, even children of God, not to talk of the people who don't even have the relationship that you and I have today. So I want to see that the secret to overcoming uh, some of what is happening today in the world is to have 
the mind of Christ as a child of God. And we're going to look at, uh, in the coming weeks, what do we mean by the mind of Christ? And tonight, we just want to have the introduction. And so I, uh, if you have your pen on your handout, uh, you don't have it there. First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16, I want to read. Uh, first Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16 says, For who had known the mind of the Lord? I'm using the King James Version. Who had known the, the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. And what is that mind of Christ? And that is what we're going to try to get into in, uh, 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 more in the coming days, God willing. And so on your handout, if you have the handout with you, the next uh, uh, test that we're going to read is Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23 to 27. And I'm using the message translation and to drive out this point. It says, keep vigilant watch over your heart, right? And the King James Version says, guide your heart with all diligence, for that is where life starts. And so every time information is pumped into you, your heart, when we talk about the heart and the mind, now we're just referring to the same thing and interchanging it with those words. You say, keep vigilant watch over your heart, for that is where life starts. Don't talk out of both sides of your mouth. Avoid careless banter, white lies, and gossip. Keep your eyes straight ahead. Ignore all sides distraction and watch your step and what the enemy is doing lately through the news and the, uh, the social media and all that is to what to create a lot of distraction many people are so overwhelmed and overcome by, with fear that they are distracted a lot of people are not even mentally they are not functioning well today because of fear and do uh, in, and say so watch your step and the road was stretched out smooth before you. Look neither to the right nor to the left. Leave evil in the dust. And so in our handout, now we have this, I said, we must conquer the battle of the mind as Christians before we can have what is successful Christian life and Christian living. And this is what God wants us to do. We must conquer the battle of the mind. And how do we, we guide our heart against the, in, the kind of information we allow to come into our heart? And so, because why is that important? I'll tell you. It's because what we hear, because the gateway to your soul, we have two gateways to our soul, the eyes and the ear, <laughs> right? And so what you hear and what you see you think on those things, right? And what you think on, you believe. And what you believe, you begin to act upon them. And that's why what you hear is very, very important. What you give your attention to, what you allow your eyes to feed on, what you allow your eyes and your ears, your eyes to see and your ears to hear are very, very important. And this is what the Bible is trying to say. And they say, guide your heart. What you hear, you reckon upon. What you reckon upon, you believe. What you believe, you become. In Proverbs, in Proverbs, Esther is here sitting beside me. And then she turned on her, <laughs> her, phone, her, her iPad and went to work. Why? She's already here. <laughs> All right. Sorry about that. <laughs> And Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 23, verse 7, for it says, As a man thinketh in his heart, so he is. Right right now, uh, does anybody have any comment to write while uh, I pause a little bit? Okay, we'll just continue. If you have any comment or any question, just write it. When a man has been taught right or taught wrong, he will believe wrong. What I mean by that in the handout is that, you see, based on the kind of information you get, if you keep getting the wrong information, you begin to think the wrong way and you begin to act the wrong way. 
right? And this is where it is very, very important what we give ourselves to, what we give our attentions to. When you believe wrong, you will begin to act and behave wrongly. What you feel you're taught with is what you become. You have that in your hand. Up. So the mind comes alive. The mind, your mind or your heart will either come alive or become dead through the kind of information you receive. And so the mind that the, for us to have the mind of Christ, the mind of Christ comes alive through genuine transformation. And the word transformation this morning, uh, this evening, as we're talking about a Bible study, you know, there are two words connected together. Trans, the root word for transport. Now, listen to me. This is very, very important. The root word for transport. So, transformation. And so, to transport into a place where you are now reformed or to be formed, right? And so, information, so this is what it is. Information is to come into you. You are informed to be transformed. So, the a transformation means the transfer of the right information that has the ability to transform, to transform our lives, creating a strong formation. What is formation? The act of giving form or shape to something or taking form to develop spiritually, this is very important. And so when we're talking about transformation, this is very important for you to understand. And this is why the, the mind or the heart is the powerhouse of mind's transformation. And so to develop spiritually, morally, mentally, and physically. And you can only accomplish genuine transformation through the process or the processing of the right information. The right information. Now you can write this down on your handout, Colossians, Colossians chapter 3, verse 16. Paul speaking to the church in Colossians, he said, Let the word of Christ dwell richly in you. Dwell, not just stay. Let the word of Christ. That means faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. And so if you want to experience genuine transformation, then you need to feed yourself with the right information. And the best information that will help to transform you and to formulate or form your life into who you are supposed to be in Christ is the word of God. Is the word of God. Now, look at what Romans chapter 12, again, talking about transformation. Uh, you can write it down in your handout. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. It says, I beseech you, reading the King James Version, this is Paul. He said, I beg you by the mercies of God that you present your body a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable act of service. Verse 2, he said, And be not conformed to this world, right? Do not let the world around you form you. Do not let the world around you transform you. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. Again, the word transformation. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Right? The mind of Christ. So we need to be transformed by the renewing of our mind that we may prove what is good. Because if the mind is not transformed, He's not able to know what is good. He wouldn't be able to know the difference between good and bad. If I've not been, if I don't keep getting the right information, I will not be able to know the difference between what is good and what is wrong. And so he said, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you will prove that which is good. Because only the transformed mind, through the word of God, will be able to prove Know the difference between what is good and what is bad. 
And if it is good to God, it is good to you, then it is acceptable. And if it is acceptable to God, then it is perfect. You see how Paul says it. And then in Ephesians chapter 3 again, to add to what we're saying, verse 20, he said, Unto him that is able to do, exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you can think or imagine. Again, it comes to the realm of the information. Because it's what you receive that you think upon. Right? What you hear and what you see, you think upon them. You think about them. And so, what is your mind filled with? Why are you filled with fear? It's because of the information you've been receiving. Right? The information, the news is telling you. You open and, and when you turn on your TV, they're telling you. All they keep giving us the, is the numbers of how many people have died today. How many people have been infected. They hardly talk about how many people have been healed. How many people have been cured of this virus. All they keep telling us is how many people have been affected. And how more people may be affected in the next one week or two. And when you keep hearing those information, what happened? You begin to think upon them. And when you think too much, you start believing what you hear. And believing what you hear translates into you acting upon them. And that is where fear lay hold of our heart. And God does not want us to do that. And so in Philippians chapter 4, verse 8, he says, Now finally, my brothers, whatever is true, Whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is lovely and pure, whatever is commendable, if there be any moral excellence, if there be any praise, dwell on these things. David speaking, he said, thy word have I hidden in my heart so that I might not sin against thee. It's all about the information we allow to gain access to the powerhouse of our destiny. That is the mind. And the mind of Christ is different. And we must have the mind of Christ, like the Bible says. They say, we have the mind of Christ. But the question is to you and me, do I have the mind of Christ? And in the coming days, as we begin to look at what the mind of Christ looks like, and I compare it to my own mind. Can I really say I have the mind of Christ? In 2 Corinthians, in chapter 2, uh, chapter 10, verse 5, it says, casting down, I love the King James Version of that translation. It says, casting down imagination. Again, the realm of imagination. How do I begin to imagine evil? It is based on what I heard or what I saw. He said, casting down imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. So fear comes. Information that is passed on to you is to make you exalt, to exalt itself above the knowledge of God. Let me give you an example now. The Bible says, God has not given you the spirit of fear. That is the knowledge of God. So when I get an information that creates fear in my mind, in my heart, what is that doing? That information now is being exalted above the knowledge of God. And so those are the, the strongholds. These are the strongholds. It's a casting down imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing into captivity every thought again. Every thought. Proverbs 4 say, guide your heart. Put a guard. Every thought to the obedience of Christ. That means my mind must be in obedience to Christ in relation to what would Jesus do, that popular saying. For as a man thinketh in his heart, so he is. Right? Like I quoted in 2 Timothy chapter 1, uh, verse 7. God has not given you the spirit of fear, but of power 
and of love and of a sound mind. The sound mind of Christ has no place for fear, has no place for, uh, for doubt, has no fear, place for negative thinking and negative thoughts. And so we must now, through the word of God, begin to cast down every imagination, every information that has come to create fear in us. We are to have the mind of Christ as Christians. In Philippians chapter 2, verse 5, Paul says to the church in Philippi, he said, let this mind be in you. That was also what? In Christ Jesus, the same mind. And so if Jesus was here today in our present day world and in this present day situation, the question to you and me is, what will Jesus do? How would Jesus act in this situation? Is Jesus, will Jesus react or respond? <laughs> right? Will Jesus react in fear or he will respond in calmness and boldness to the situation? And if I have the mind of Christ, the Bible says, let this mind be in you. Not a different mind. Not the mind that was or is in my biological father or my mother, my uncle, the mind of Christ, not the mind of my pastor, not the mind of my college professor, not the mind of my prime minister or the president of my country, not the mind of my premier or my mayor. I'm not supposed to think like they do. In every situation, I should have the mind of Christ. But in this present day and present time, do we have the mind of Christ? Let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus, the mind of Christ. One thing I know, again, I interjected, if you have the note with you at home there, I said that the mind of Christ is not cunning, neither is it crafty. Right? A crafty, cunning, conniving, deceitful mind is the mind of the serpent. The Bible described that mind. And so what we're talking about here is a mind that is pure, free from every kind of duplicity. Genesis chapter 3 verse 1 says, Now the serpent was more crafty. Sometimes there are a lot of Christians who act in a very crafty way, and they call it being smart or call it wisdom. You can be crafty and still not be wise. <laughs> and so, but the mind of Christ is wise, and we will get to that in the coming days. And so we're looking at the mind of Christ. So the question to you and to me, and the question I will ask is, what does the mind of Christ look like? What then is the mind of Christ? Right? In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16, say, For who had known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. What is the mind of Christ? What does the mind of Christ look like? And in your handout there, I listed 10 characteristics of the mind of Christ. Right? And that is not all. That is what I'm able to do now. And in, the reason why we have the notes is that you can now begin to prayerfully study the scripture and the Holy Spirit will begin to reveal to you different characteristics of what the mind of Christ should look like, what the mind of Christ. And that is what I'm supposed to have. The first point here, briefly, is that the mind of Christ is alive, it's active is full, is alive. It, to be alive means to be spiritually sensitive and alert, to be spiritually energized, quick and brisk in understanding spiritual matters, even carnal matters. And so that is why it's not, it's not, a, it's not a crafty mind. The mind of Christ is not crafty, is alive, is wise. But, and to be alive means to be quick. Right? To be, you know, 
to be quick means to be sensitive, to be alert, to be spiritually energized and um, quick and brisk in understanding spiritual matters. And one of the scriptures that blows my mind is Isaiah chapter 11, verse 1 and 2. Esther, can you open Isaiah chapter 11, verse 1 to 3? Anyway, it's in your hand out there. We will read that quickly. I read it. Uh, <laughs> First of all, we'll look at Romans chapter 8, verse 6. All right? You want to read it? Uh, for to set the mind on the flesh is death. I'm reading Romans 8, 6 first. For to set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. And Isaiah, chapter, uh, Isaiah 11, 1 to 3 says, uh, There shall come forth a shoot from the stump of Jesse, and a branch from his roots shall bear fruit. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, and his delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what he, his eyes see or decide disputes by what his ears hear. Right. He will not decide. How do you decide a dispute? Not based on what you hear or see, but still make a righteous judgment. This is what the Bible, this is what it means to, to have the mind of Christ. When the mind is alive, the sharp mind, not the crafty mind. And the Bible say, it say he will judge not by what he hears or what he sees, yet he will make a right judgment. That is to say, even in, we can bring it back to what is happening in the world today. And so we, we, we will not make our decision. If you have the mind of Christ, if I have the mind of Christ, I don't make my decision based on what the news media is feeding me. I don't make my decision based on what the, the world is saying, but I will still make a right judgment, not make a foolish judgment, not take uh, a stupid risk about my life. But how do you make, and this is what the mind of Christ is, and this is what the Holy Spirit is saying. You see, that mind is alive. I'm being alive again. Uh, let me read that. Let me define that, what I wrote here. To be alive means to be spiritually sensitive and alert. To be spiritually energized, quick and brisk in understanding spiritual matters as it relates to your destiny, to the nations, the community where you are. So you're not making your judgment. You're not making prophetic declaration based on what you heard on the news. You're not making prophetic declaration based on what somebody said, but because you are, your spiritual antenna is tuned to the Holy Ghost. Oh, help me here. Now, I don't want to start preaching. <laughs> I'm getting excited. <laughs> but this is what the mind of Christ is. Because how can that mind be alive? One, because that mind has been transformed by the right information that that mind has been, he gave himself access to, right? Romans again, chapter 12 says, be ye transformed, be ye transformed. Is the renewed mind, which is the mind of Christ that can be alive. And that mind now can make judgment. And that was what we need. And if you have that mind, you are not moved by what you see, what you hear, you are moved by the power of the Holy Spirit. And you can say boldly that if God be for me, who can be against me? Right? And so this is what, that is one thing. And secondly, today, maybe we'll look at this point again. Second point, the mind of Christ is focused. Why is it focused? The mind of Christ is focused and is single, is straight. Now, a mind that is quick, that is sharp, that is sensitive, will be focused, of course. To have the mind of Christ is to have a focused mind. What does it mean to be focused here spiritually? Is to have undivided attention, total concentration that creates clear perception. This is important because 
Everything, our action is based on perception. What we perceive. And that perception comes to what we see, what we hear. What we see, what we hear. Your perception. Right? So, focus simply means undivided attention, total concentration that clear that creates clear perception, understanding of the object of your adoration, and that object of your adoration in this case is Christ Jesus. Not the world, not the president, not the premier, not what they are saying, but what the, what the Lord Jesus. If Jesus becomes the object of your adoration and the word of God becomes your manual for life, then you think different, right? This is what the mind of Christ is, a focused mind. The mind of Christ is focused. The mind of Christ is alive. And because it's alive, it's single. It's my, it, 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 you know, it, it, it's focused. In Luke chapter 9, verse 10, uh, 51, when the days drew near for him to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem. And Jesus there's nobody as focused as our Lord Jesus Christ. In one translation, he said, My eyes is set towards Jerusalem. And Peter came to him in, you know, in Matthew chapter 16. You'll see the story. And he said, No, 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 no. You can't go to Jerusalem. I'm paraphrasing that. Oh, Master, that was where you're going to go and they want to kill you. And he said, No, 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 no. He said, Get there behind me. You do not have in your mind the things of God. God, or because you know, a focused mind is not threatened, is not intimidated by his circumstances. A focused mind do not make decision or permanent decision over a temporal situation. A focused mind is not intimidated by the noise of the enemy. A focused mind is not threatened by the temporal issues that is happening because his mind is set. His focus on Christ. The Bible said, looking unto Jesus, right? In, 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 in Hebrews chapter 12, it says, seeing then that we're surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin that does easily distract us, right? Let us fix our eyes. On Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Let us fix our eyes. The reason why we are filled with fear is because we fix our eyes and our ears towards the world is saying. And now we're not hearing what Jesus is saying anymore. We are so consumed with what the world is telling us. If only we can fix our eyes on Jesus. Hebrew, again, let me read that. You, I think it's in your handout. I just saw it now. It said, therefore, since we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. Now, let me explain that scripture a little bit before we'll be rounding up. And I think we'll stop in this second part and continue again. Surrounded by great cl In every situation in life, we are always surrounded by two groups of witnesses. One group, this is my understanding. There are the groups that are cheering you to succeed. You have your cheerleaders. And that cheerleader can be your wife, your friend, your brother. Like in my own case, it's my wife, right? She's my cheerleader. She cheers me on, right? And believe in me. Then on the other side is the other ones who want you to fail, <laughs> right? And those witnesses, they, they, they are booing you. They are putting you down. They speak negative things to you about you. They tell you how fat you are, on my, in my own case, right? <laughs> right? And then look at how you're so fat now. Uh, oh, you need to do something about your weight. Oh, you look at you didn't go to college. You are not as intelligent as the other person. You don't know how to preach well like the other person. You are not a good teacher. Those are cloud of witnesses. What are they trying to do? One person is saying, oh, cheering you on. Oh, you're a wonderful man. You're a wonderful woman. Oh, you're so pretty. You're wonderful. Another one is putting you down. These are a cloud and crowd of weaknesses. But you are not to be distracted by either or. 
<laughs> because those who are cheering you for good can be a distraction. And those who are putting you down also can be a distraction. You don't need their distraction. You don't need to focus on any of those cloud of witnesses. We are surrounded by this great cloud of witnesses. But let us lay aside every whiff and sin which cling closely to us. Let us run the race. Now, the King James Version says something. Let us run with patience. How can you run? Running suggests a man or a woman who is in a hurry. How can I run with patience at the same time? Now, only the Holy Ghost can do that through you. <laughs> you see, and that is how you can be in the midst of chaos and commotion and still be calm. That's what the Holy Spirit is saying. That in the midst of all the news media about coronavirus, a hundred people were dying, and you just... Isaiah said, he will keep in perfect peace whose mind he stayed on him because what he trusts in the Lord. He will keep you. <laughs> and so you can run with patience. You are running... But you are calm. You are making sharp, quick, spiritual decision without breaking ranks. This is the mind of Christ, child of God. And this is what the Holy Spirit is saying we need. Right? Look into Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. He is the author. And I want to stop here tonight. Jesus is the author. And that is all you need. Is the one we need to focus on. Only him has a pen of a ready writer in his hand. He is the only one who can rewrite the story of your life. Not the cloud of witnesses around you. Only him has a pen only him can rewrite your story. So he's the only one you need to fix your gaze on. He's the only one you need to look to for direction, for instruction in life. You see what the Holy Spirit is saying to us? He is the perfecter of our faith. He's the one who will finish it. So the last chapter of your life cannot be written by coronavirus. Only you, only him can write it. So fear has no place in you. So tonight, child of God, I want to encourage you to, in all your gifting, get understanding. Let this mind be in you that is also in Christ Jesus. Let us strive to have the mind of Christ. As we continue with this study, because I said it's going to be 30 to 40 minutes every Wednesday now. And uh, so we may have to stop in this. I, I think Esther has a contribution to make, so you can say something before we pray. <laughs> At least she's here with me, so she can say something. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just going to say that um, that uh, this is not saying to disregard the rules set by the authorities. So, no, no. Yeah, that is not saying that because we have the mind of Christ or we have faith and belief, that does not mean that we should disregard what the authorities are saying. The Bible says that all authorities are set by God. Right. And we're to obey and, and follow the rule. Yeah. yeah, and this is where the sharp mind comes, the mind alive that he gives you the wisdom to be able to act in truth and in righteousness, right? And but not act we like I always say to us, we are a people of faith, not a people of fear. Right? And we we submit to authority and do what is needful, but we don't act from the place of fear. We act and respect authority from the place of faith. Our life is in the hand of the Lord, and he's the one that has the final say. 
And the mind of Christ is an obedient mind, is submitted to authority. And because for you to have authority, you have to be submitted to authority anyway. And so a disobedient mind is not the mind of Christ. The mind of Christ is obedient. The Bible says Jesus was obedient, right? Uh, for the joy set before him, he endured the shame of the cross. He was obedient unto death. And so the mind of Christ is an obedient mind, is a submissive mind within the context of the rule of law, whatever you want to call it. But like she said, it's not for us to go there and begin to act unruly or to become rude and arrogant. That is not the spirit of God. But the point here is that the mind of Christ is alive, is sharp, is quick, is not intimidated, is not timid, is not fearful. And so I want to encourage you, children of God, and if you don't have the handout, uh, you can call the office tomorrow and they can email you a copy so that you can have it and you can be stored in it ahead. And so tonight we just want to pray. Is there anybody uh, that has any prayer requests? I know that now that it's so, such a public place, you may not want to put it there. But you can send uh, a prayer request to me on your uh, through the messenger. And uh, if the one that you want everybody to agree with. But church, uh, can we just uh, pray for our town and also pray for the province and pray for the nations uh, that, that this uh, virus thing will be over soon. That those who are affected or infected by the virus, God will bring healing to them. And I think we can do that right now before we close for the night. And uh, let us pray and pray that God will just send healing uh, to the nations of the earth, especially uh, our neighbor, America, where uh, so many people have died through this own thing. And also let us thank God that so far uh, we have been spared from it up to now. Uh, it's not because we are better. It's not because we are. It's just the grace and the mercy of God. And I will pray that that same grace will extend to the end. And that the hand of God that is upon Grand Cash will continue to protect us in the name of Jesus. Let us pray. You are the Lord. Let your name be glorified. You are the Lord. Let your name be glorified. We give you glory and honor. You are the Lord. Let your name be glorified. We glorify you, you are the Lord. Let your name be glorified. We give you glory, Jehovah, and honor. You are the Lord. Let your name be glorified. Yes, there's a prayer request that came that we should pray for the students in the university writing their exams and they are studying at home. And so even after now, you can also be praying for that. But let's pray. Uh, eternal Rock of Ages, we just want to give you all the praise and give you all the glory for another wonderful night. We'll thank you for the gift of technology that has enabled us to be able to fellowship together as a community of people. And we'll thank you for those who've given this gift to be able to invent this. And we bless them and we bless their home. And we pray, Lord, that this technology will continue to be used to promote the kingdom of Christ all over the nations of the earth. 
Father Lord, we just pray for our students, O God, that are home uh, studying, especially the university students, O God, that even in the midst of the tension, O God, that they will still do well in their written exams. We also pray for the high school students that are supposed to be graduating now. We pray, Lord, that none of them will panic over the situation, O oh God, that toward the enemy, even intended for evil, you will use it for your glory, that this stumbling block shall come, become a stepping stone for a greater height in the name of Jesus, that our children will excel academically in the mighty name of Jesus, that every student, Lord, in Alberta, O oh Lord, in Canada, O oh God, that are at home who are studying, O oh God, that they will still find uh, that, that, that wisdom, you will grant them the wisdom, the concentration, the focus to do their schoolwork and still come out with flying colors in the name of Jesus. We pray, Father God, uh, for the country that are most affected by this virus. And we pray, Father God, for your healing balm, O oh God, to begin to rest upon them. We pray, Father God, that you will send your angels to the four corners of the nations of the earth, to America, to Italy, to Spain, to Africa, to Asia, even, Lord, to our country, Canada here, to Vancouver, Father God, Calgary, and Ontario, Toronto. Lord, let them flap their wings of healing upon those who are sick with this virus right now and flap their wings of healing upon them and begin to drip them with that heavenly medicine that is needed in the name of Jesus. Lord, we breathe in, we breathe the bread of the Holy Ghost into their lungs right now. We curse, oh Lord, pneumonia to begin to die in the name of Jesus. Every lungs are affected by this virus, we decree in the name of Jesus, receive the touch of God in the name of Jesus. By the stripe of our Lord Jesus Christ be healed. In the name of Lord, at a time like this, as a church, we lay hold of the mercy seat, uh, even on behalf of those that do not know you. Lord, we pray, Lord, that your mercy, O oh God, will prevail over judgment. Uh, Lord, that you will arise on the wings of your mercy. Lord, and let this thing, O oh God, let we pray for a turn around even now in the name of Jesus. We pray, Lord, that the same spirit that raised you from the dead will begin to quicken every mortal body, Lord, on the platform of your mercy. Lord, you cause the rain to fall both on the righteous and the unrighteous. And so tonight, Lord, we pray that the rain of your healing power will fall upon the nations of the earth. Whether they recognize you or not, Father God, Lord, you say, if you find Find ten righteous men, O oh God, you will not destroy the land. And Lord, that we are more than ten, O oh God, tonight. And so we pray for Canada. We say, Lord, for the sake of the elect, let your reign of healing fall upon our nation tonight. In the name of Jesus, let the reign of your healing power rain down upon Canada, rain down upon Alberta, rain down in BC, in Ontario, Father God, to the four corners of this nation. In the name of Jesus. Lord, will stretch forth the rod of God's healing upon those who have been attacked with different ailments, O oh God, that men have ignored. We speak to those struggling with cancer right now. In the name of Jesus, let every tumor begin to receive the fire of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' mighty name, for those who are traumatized emotionally, People, let us pray for homes. Uh, at this time, there are a lot of homes, though there are abuses going on. Uh, children are suffering because they've not experienced living in the same under the same roof with the same parents for more than a week before now. It's going to one month, and people are losing their mind. There are a lot of things happening in homes that you and I may not be aware of, but I sense in my spirit that there are a lot of homes are under attack right now.
And let us pray because we're just focusing on this virus. There are more damaging things happening in homes that is worse than the virus. And when this is all over, some of the news we may hear may not be, may not be good. Let us begin to pray right now for homes. Let us pray that the peace of God that passes every man's understanding will just begin to overshadow homes from Grand Cash to Ontario, to New York, to Sydney, through us, and to South Africa. We speak peace to every home where there is tension right now. We speak peace where there is tension. We speak hope. We speak to every marriage under tension right now in the name of Jesus. We speak to every home in the name of Jesus. We release the peace of God. We release the love of God. We pray for reconciliation. We pray for the God that the peace of the Holy Ghost that passes every man's understanding will begin to flood every home where there is crisis right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We speak peace to every home in the name name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for everyone, oh God, tonight, for every silent need. Lord, you know every need before you tonight. Every one of us that are, oh, attended the Bible study tonight, you know the need, the secret need in our heart. Lord, I just present them all to you. Lord, I pray, Lord, that in this month of April, this month of resurrection, May everything that looks dead in our life receive the quickening of the Holy Ghost, receive the resurrection power. We bring back to life marriages that are in crisis. Your health, we speak life in the name of Jesus. Your weak bones, we speak life to it in the name of Jesus. And we say it is well with you in the name of Jesus. And we speak peace over the town of Grand Cash. Let the mountains of Grand Cash be surrounded with those heavenly hosts always, sir. Ah, Father, we thank you that we are divinely defended and protected. Lord, we lift, O oh God, the bars of divine defense for the town of Grand Cash. No evil is permitted, O oh God, to cross the gates of the city. Lord, you say you sought for a gate man and a watchman. Lord, we in Cornerstone, we say we are the watchmen over this town. And we say this town shall not be touched. This town shall not be destroyed. This town shall not come down under the attack of the enemy in any form or shape in the name of Jesus. <coughs> Thank you, Jesus. Father, we give you praise. We give you praise. We bless your name. We bless your name. We thank you, eternal rock of ages. Everlasting Father, be thou exalted. Thank you, omnipotent God. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. And amen. And amen. All right. I think uh, thank you all for tonight. It's, and uh, the Lord bless you. And uh, if you've not had your supper yet, and I think you all, we all have, it, uh, have done that. Uh, so bad that we're not able to do that together yet. But uh, very soon it will be happening. So enjoy the rest of the evening. And uh, I will see you again in a couple of days. But God willing, same time. On Wednesday, if the Lord tarries, we shall be online. And on Sunday at 11, the same time, uh, we'll be bringing you words from the throne of grace. So uh, have a good evening. The Lord bless and keep you. And uh, take care and God bless. Amen. <laughs>